Welcome back. Back in the plant room now, and I need to cover up some of the drain holes with some mesh, and then we're gonna take some uh, bone's eye wire, and uh, we're gonna get the wire coming up through the bottom so we're ready to set our trees when our trees are ready to uh, be repotted into this big clock. So, looking online, I found dozens of these for a few bucks uh, at one site and they come pre-cut. There's round ones and there's square ones. Super, super nice. They fit right over my holes beautifully. So I'm going to put these on now and then we'll get some wire on. So I always hang on to all my extra bonsai wire even if it's only a few inches long because when I need it for uh, a project like this, I have them. So we're going to make a staple shape. <clears throat> so this staple shape is going to go through our mesh and then it's going to go through the hole then we can flip it on the bottom side and make it stay on there. So I'll move these to the side and show you like so. And then on the back side I can just come back here and I can bend this wire back this way this wire back this way, it's not going to scratch anything, and there we go. We are set to go. So one down, about seven to go. I'll show you one more in normal speed here. So I'm just going to go ahead and search in my... It's probably long enough. This is a real thin plastic bottom of this pot, so I don't need it to be very thick. So I'm going to go ahead, and what you're going to do uh, if you've never done this before, if you want to get as precise of a measurement as possible, is you're gonna you're gonna flip up one side. So there's one side of our staple right there. So we're gonna go ahead and then measure by placing oh, placing this right here on our hole. And then I'm going to grab right about where I need to bend it, right about there, not going to hurt myself. And then there's my other bend. So now I have my staple, my big staple. I'm going to go ahead and grab my next one, put my staple in there. Put it in place, my staple sticking out right where I want it to be. And for me, for this pot, that is just fine. It's going to hold and everything is good. Let's keep doing it. There we have it. Now we have nine drain holes that have successfully been meshed. Now, if you don't find these little meshes online, you can go to any craft store and get some uh, sheets of it for only a couple of bucks each. But I was able to get, I think I have over 50 of these meshes, it was only a couple bucks. So super, super inexpensive. Comes down to just a few cents each. And I have them for a long time and they're pre-cut. Super, super nice. Nice to be prepared. Have my extra wire here going to good use. So now, my extra little small wire, I can put away. And next, I have to um, put some wire in so when I get my trees in, I can tie some stuff in. So I had drilled all those holes in there. We have a couple we can't push through anymore because of our wood support back here. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just place some wires and stick them up here about this high. And um, I won't probably go from here all the way to over here. I'll probably keep a couple you know, close to each other, relatively close to each other, that'll save on a little wire, um, and I'll just be able to uh, connect them, hopefully, to each other, um, and they'll they'll get, get uh, nice and snug the more we cut. So, former bonsai member had a lot of extra wire to get rid of, and uh, so I got this big spool of wire, uh, which fits through my holes perfectly here for a nice snug fit, uh, and I got it at a ridiculously low cost. So I'm not as worried about. Uh, the waste on this one, um, 
it looks like copper, but it's not. This is just an aluminum wire. So I'm gonna see about, if I'm going from hole to hole here this close, or maybe from here to here, I want it to stick up at least to reach to a couple other holes. So I think I'm gonna make them all about this size and we'll go from there. And to keep life simple, I'm just gonna make them all the same size. And before I call it quits, I'm gonna go ahead and get two extra that are a little bit longer, just in case I need one a little bit longer for whatever reason. We'll just go about that size. In case my last couple of holes aren't as close together as I had planned. There we go. My center beam right now goes from left to right as I'm looking at, left to right, from nine to three. I wanna keep my wires on the inside of this track right here. Cause that if I go over this right here, that means I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have, um, a little wire exposed beyond where this would sit on a stump or something. So I want to keep all my wires there. So I think it'd just be easier to go from the back. So I have one wire here, one, one hole I should say. So I'm going to place it in and I'm going to bend it over. See if that looks about the length I want. That's how much sticks out right now. And then I can measure right here. So I get a relatively straight bend in my wire at the bottom. And it's gonna bend right there. So now I can pull it out and I can bend it. So I basically made a staple. This side's a little bit longer. I don't mind that. I'll make it work. Put both of those in there. Fits there. That's a little short on my bend, but that's nice because this made this a really nice snug fit. So back here, it's below the surf, uh, the edge here, below the wood. And then when I show my pot, there's my two wires. Nice and nice and tight, that feels good. All right, so we're gonna put a couple more of those in. We are set. We have a good start of our wires in here. I don't have as much in the center here, but I can poke a couple through here. I can poke a couple through here, here to here, here to here. We'll get all those taken care of when we see the trees in here. I've got about 11, 12, 13 trees. They're gonna all fit in here. I don't know where they're gonna go. And so once there's some soil in here and some trees that have started, I'll be able to poke up some other ones as needed for those final secure. So now I have to see if all my trees are ready and we'll do part three, and that's the fun part. That's gonna be planting these trees. Let's go check those trees out and we'll keep continue our work. The wires are all in, and the trees are all in the plant room. So I have what I believe is a cottonwood tree. I've got a maple. Here is a tree from the cabin, and this is a poplar. We got some ashes that were grown in the yard and not diseased and I've got some more small maples grown here and this maple here that was attacked by a critter to uh, last winter and uh, chopped it down to a little bit above there I think and and here we got some new growth so we're gonna take all of these trees and we're gonna put them in a round forest pot that used to be and still kind of looks like a clock. First up, we're gonna tackle these ashes uh, in a shallow pot. I believe the soil 
gonna fall right out of there. So these were growing underneath my deck. I think two years ago I plucked them out of the ground, put them in a pot. They grew all last summer in this pot, I believe. I have to look back at my records to see if I had them in a different pot besides this. Looks like I got some nice big roots in there. Now I do have some ties on here. I've got one sticking up. I'm not sure what uh, what happened here with this one, but it's loose. And I can see some of the other ties in here. So we're going to break some of these free. I'm just going to break this one free right there at the entrance, and I'll break free this one right here. Then I can just push this up, hopefully. Push that one up, hopefully. It appears I might have to let this thaw out in the broom a little bit more. This is taken from outside. Recently loosened up from the bottom, but I do have a little bit of a, a little bit of thaw in the middle, it looks like. I don't want to shock it with any water. So I'm just going to expose as much as I can now, and then I'll set this one aside and work on my other trees, because I have so many to clear out. I got one tree that's kind of loose. I kind of anticipated that I'd have a few uh, trees that were a little solidly in their pots, but I have enough trees to work on that I'll get to them and by the time I get to them all, they're uh, nice, nice and warm in my plant room where I should say they are warming up nicely. A lot of this soil from a couple of these pots is relatively new. So I'm going to be able to recycle a lot of this uh, soil for future pottings. And actually I might even pour some of this soil that I'm going to find today here into what I'm working on just because it's going to be a great big pot. That clock in a pot is going to take up a lot of soil. So to save a little on the money, we can go ahead and recycle some of the soil. This one's tied in as well. I'm going to clip it off the two sides here on one side, and then I'll start pulling up on the other side so I can conserve some of the wire for future projects. There we go. So this one just came right off. This one is at the tie point. Take that off like that. Save my wire. Uh, that one just cut right off. And there's tree number one. Looks like I have a pretty decent radial pattern of roots. I got a lot of rocks to sift out there yet, but pot number one can go aside. Save my mesh for next time. So the maples that I'll be planting today are also backyard maples. So everything I'm doing for this bonsai display, this forest, which I've been very intrigued about the last few months, doing more forest plantings, I've always been very interested in it, but never had enough trees. Now I have enough trees that I had sitting in my yard for the last year or two, you know, from a year sapling in the ground. Sometimes they grow in my, my koi pond, the river between my two koi ponds. I'll get this maple, it just starts growing. And I go ahead and I pot it up and I'm just always experimenting. So we got a nice flat base here. And 
I will go ahead and just cut up some of the longer shoots right now. I'm going to get more, more picky as I get ready to plant. But this is just getting out of the pot. We know we're going to have to narrow it up a little bit. So for right now, there is tree number one. I'm going to go ahead and take care of my three little maples next. This should be pretty simple to come on out. One or all of these trees right here were in my, in my river going from pond to pond. And I know this one was because this one was growing up out of the water. There. This one was growing up out of the water like this, up towards the sun, but the root was kind of underneath some rocks. But uh, here we go. We've got some root there. Kind of long in one direction. <laughs> Not a great radial pattern right now, but there's another tree. We'll set that aside over there. These are small trees, not wired down, so they're going to come out pretty good. And again, this is another curved one. I would assume that this curve here is because this was growing out of a rock area where the, where the seed fell into my, my river of my pond and just started shooting up and out to the sky. So there's another one. This one's more straight up and down, almost tap rootish straight down, but here's the curve down here. But I got some roots that grew up here, so I can... Uh, play with that one in a little bit. So not a ton of roots, but probably the real small, real small trees on the outer edges of my new forest. And so this, this was actually taken from my, my, uh, a work site and grown in a pile of rocks that was not needed. The rocks were going to be saved, but anything grown out of it was just going to be demolished. And so I got myself what I believe is this cottonwood tree. And I'm going to put the bin back up here. This one was uh, beaten up a little bit by a critter as well. Um, I don't remember how bad it was, but I want to say right up to this spot right here. This one's looking like we're going to have some thawing to do as well. We got that first inch of soil doing well, but it'll have to sit here and do some thawing in my plant room. So we will leave this to thaw. So there's the four trees that came out nice and easy. We got the one down there getting a little warmer. And I got these two big ones out of the pot. These are the only two in dirt and they've got about an inch, an inch here uh, of still a little frozen. All the roots are mainly below, hanging down below. And I was able to get uh, most of the, most of the dirt below the surface good we got about an inch on both of these though that is still a little frozen and this guy's a little bit frozen too so we're going to keep plucking away at these and get them a little bit more out of their dirt and then we'll do some placement and kind of see where we're at we might have to let some of these uh, thaw for another couple of hours so in the video world we'll be back in a click so here's always a good sight to see when you lift up your tree your forest that you already have already has a forest of roots that covers the whole shape of the tree. It's always fun to pull that out of your pot and the whole thing comes out. So this one's looking good. We'll clean it up a little bit and get to those next trees. Still got plenty of work to do on that one. Haven't touched it yet though because I was pretty excited when this one came and broke free. So with working on the other trees, I was able to come back and work on this one. Now, I could not remember what the bottom of this tree looked like. But as I turn it upside down, I've got this interesting root structure kind of bending here from right to left, chopped off right here, and then chopped off back here. It'll sit up nice right there. I could almost put this over a rock and have root over a rock for the, one of the trees in the forest, because you see I got all this space underneath here 
I could put a rock under there. But as this thing grew in the pot, if you can see, it got a lot of damage. I don't know if it was, this was a cut at one point right there, that was a cut. But then there's that, there's like something grab a hold of it right here. Let me bring it right there for you. See that? There you go, look at that. Grabbed a hold of it possibly, did I bump it? That looks like damage, but this is actually like it healing like it was a cut early on. And so this one's got some scar marks on it. But the very tip of it is where we still have some new buds ready to grow. But it's too tall. Although for this forest, I can leave that one there and cut it later. Because as I step back, yeah, that's two plus feet off of the off of the bottom of the soil, way up here. But again, as I transplant these trees, which I remind you were all absolutely free. None of these were purchased anywhere. They were taken out of my yard or the cabin or my work site. So that's going to sit as maybe the very, very center of the tree. But what's cool about this is I noticed this shoot later in, uh, in the year last year, just going like crazy gangbusters. And so I knew that if this main tree here broke, died, whatever, I had this other one growing and growing fast. And as you can see, it's now like a twin trunk down there. But then, look right there. Another one started shooting up. And that thing's connected to this big stub right here, just ever so slightly. See if I can get over here a little bit better light. Right there. It's attached right there. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that. I probably will leave that alone as a one solid tree, almost like when you plant a raft and lay a tree down and have all these branches grow up. It'll just keep adding to my forest floor with a couple different sizes. And then should the big one die, I'd have these little ones to survive. So I've got that one for the main trunk, probably in the middle, and the other ones are gonna grow around it. Well, we hope anyway. So we gotta do a little more digging with our last two trees. Got this one right here. That's next. And that one's gonna need a little more time. That's still frozen. But it's mostly bonsai soil, so it'll thaw out in the rocks. The soil will move up pretty good. I'm going to put this rock right in the middle for this tree to sit on. And maybe after the next transplant, the next repot, we'll be able to lift that up a little bit more and have more root over rock. Sits on there pretty nicely. This tree will go somewhere in this vicinity. I still think this tree will lean this way. And I've got all these back here that I can kind of place. This curvy one, this one back here, this one back here. As nice as that was to take those five trees out of that pot and see all that root growth together, I did go ahead and separate all these trees. So now I can kind of shorten the roots and then I can place these in a better position. This one right now has a very nice shape right here for a bonsai on its own uh, as it gets thicker through the years take it out of the forest and who knows what might happen to that but it's got a really nice shape see we have this thing curving up this way this one has got and got it this bottom curly q shape here but for this planting who cares who knows where it might go who cares where it curls in the back you might not see the curl as much We'll see how that one can sit. I've got this one that splits, has a really nice bottom. This would be really neat exposed roots in the front. If I were to put this in front right here instead, off to the side maybe, maybe on this side. This one has a lot of roots. You can sit back here as I shorten up those roots. Again, this one could be shortened up and put maybe here. I don't want the roots going to be staring right at us in the face, but I do like root structure in general. And I like going up to the North Shore of Minnesota and seeing some root structure. If I were to go ahead and place it this way, the roots flow, flow in towards the path like you're walking through the Superior Hiking Trail and you see all these exposed roots on the steps of the trail. This one just won't stand up on its own yet. I need a rock for that or something heavy. Let's put this on here for right now. There we go. Now I've got two more still. So this one is just a stand-up tree, could go somewhere in here. This one's got some nice movement too, very bizarre. It was reaching for light under the deck, so started out real gnarly to begin with. And maybe this just sits up here somewhere. Uh, and this one can be up high over here. 
This one is the big one, so maybe it gets a little closer. And I put this one over here. So I have some I have just some, some decisions to make, as always, with bonsai. Making some of those decisions. And I still have one tree left though, sitting right over here that's still too firm in the pot. To, and that might make the decision uh, completely different. You know, I had all these trees over here, but with this growth of roots over here, maybe this rock and structure comes over here more. And maybe it's off to this side of the forest. And maybe this one comes right over here. Look at all that nice, all that nice roots sitting there on the trail as the tree leans out a little bit to the left there. And I can add more of these trees on this side perhaps. And my maples can maybe hug the back of this. So if I have these trees here, I move this maple over to this side. Sticking out that way. This one's sticking out this way. Here's the great big one. Maybe this one goes here instead. And then this one off to this side. Right there. Just reaching up for that light. And this one back here is kind of incidental right now. Maybe that does something like that. Again, hold this down with my, my tool. There. And this one comes back up here. Then I got these other maples. The maple comes back here and just sits right there. I could have this tiny maple that's snuck up here with the wind. Maybe that's growing over here. Who knows? Get these guys back up and straight over here. What if these come up like that? A lot of possibilities with a lot of trees. It's hard for me to see from the side. This one's growing off into the inside of the forest. I got my trail right down here with some boulders possibly coming in there. Um, and if I don't like that tree that way, I can maybe flip it around this way. Maybe this tree on a rock grows this way and you see the roots growing over the rock. Right like that. Maybe you see that right on that rock right there. Here's the rock cliff right there. How does that look? Got that rock cliff growing right there. Got some soil that'll come up. This would sit on the rocks. This would get buried with some soil. This one comes over here. Put these tighter together when we cut the roots back. So I should do a little bit of that right now. Okay. So these roots are too long. They are wrapping around the pot. We don't need them this long anymore. We want a nice radial root pattern. So we got a nice little radial root pattern there. This is probably still a little bit too long. This one's super long. There we go. So that's a little bit smaller. This was growing really, really well, so I'm not too worried. That it won't do again the same this year. So let's put that one down for a moment. Pick up this big long guy. So I don't need this long root. I don't need that one sticking down. I don't need these right here. So I got this big long root that goes way down here and trickles down here. We don't need that much root. We don't need that much root. We gotta figure out where this is gonna tuck in. We'll get some more branching off of that root in other directions. We wanna try to make this a little more radio. Radial. Radial root pattern. So that one's a little bit shorter now. This one's just laying back here. It's got more root than tree right now. Look at the root structure on that for this little tiny tree right here. Well, we're going to go ahead and cut that off. We're going to cut some of this off. This didn't have a lot of room to grow in the pot. Well, it had room, but it was just starting to grow all kitty wampus. So we have to be able to step back and take a peek. Well, this one's certainly top heavy. It's top heavy in the forest right now. It's a heavy big forest right here with this big tree back here. So we got a couple of trees back there with the maple, these maples back here, this big cottonwood up here and all the ashes here. But then I have this one right here that still could fit right in the front here. 
So I might want to bring these back a little bit. Maybe back to here, back to here, back to here. This one can maybe come in here more. And this one can come right here. Wrap this wire here so it holds it up. And then if you can get a visual here, this one would go right here. Not the whole pot, of course. But you see that nice root structure? It's going down like over here. We can put that over rocks right in front too, once I get that out of here. It's starting to move a little bit in there, but we still have another hour or so of thawing, I think. Time to take a peek at it from a whole bunch of different angles. There's not much height right here. Kind of goes back down here with this tall one right here. I might want this one more in the center of that trail. Going over the trail. This is right here, this is right here, and then this small one over here. Like that. Shows this going up like this. A little height up front. Let me just put this wire over here to hold it up for me. In order for you guys to get a real true vision of what I am going to be looking at here, I moved my pot for you so we'd have the black background and not the fish tank. I know that was probably hard to watch for a little while there as I was looking at what I wanted to see. But now with that black background, you can kind of see the forest developing. Got a maple way back there. All our ash trees will develop over here. You got the two big main ones right here. Uh, and then this little one that's growing from this main one off to the right now. And we've got some more uh, maples in the back there that are kind of staggered back there. We just have to find a place for this guy right here with this really nice fun trunk line here that goes to the left. So really neat movement, possibly over a rock right here in front as well as we try to get some of this to grow and shoot on up. So I'm going to go ahead and put some soil on this guy and uh, start working on some placements. I do know that one over there is gonna be in the front somewhere, so I'm just gonna have to make room for it and find a place that I like after I secure some of these trees. So let's get some soil in there. So I think the most important placement for me is this first one and where this rock's going to go and where this tree is going to go over the rock. So that placement is important. Get all these branches out of here. And this hugs this rock really nice right there. So let's see if I can put that right there. That'll sit real nice right there. Now it's standing up, so I'm not gonna wire anything quite yet. already see this back wire or this back root is so long and I'm going to cut that off right there. So my next placement is going to be this guy. I'm going to figure out where he's going to be nice sitting nice. Now it's a chop back here so it's going to grow back here as I get rid of this chop. Why don't I do some of that right now? Oh, 
there goes my main tree. So we'll put that back up there on this rock. It will be hanging up a little bit. There we go. And we want this guy kind of back here. We don't see the chop. But possibly right there. And then I have the next bigger maple, which shoots off to the right as well, can be back there. And then I have these small little ones, which again, I think I'll put one right here. I'll put one back here. And I'll put this little curly Q guy right here. wants to fall down. I do have a rock back here I could put up here just for the time being. Look at that. Growing up off the side of that rock. Be kind of interesting. So I have some space out here. I've got this little tree trying to grow. We're going to leave that for now. This one is the double trim trunk here. So I could put this a little bit closer here to see if that one grows there. And then you got so many wires here you can't see which ones are trees right now. This one is here is just held up by the rock. And there. So I got that as a forest. I got one, two, three, four trees kind of rimming around back here with this is a wire. Let's put this one down. Got this baby one back here where I can place so we can see it. Put this down right now, down right now, down right now. Here we go. What do we think? What do we think? Hard to see. So it looks pretty good. This one shoots between these two. This one's in the back distance. I think this one should be uh, by this rock. We need to get a bigger one up front here. And this little one back here. Sorry for the block. Sorry for the block, folks. There we go. You know, this rock might be the one that's up here, but again, I could add rocks to my, my uh, design here. So there's that, and there's that. So this one's a little bigger. It's got it growing up this way and up here. These two are growing out that way. Wait. Right there. There we go. All right. And then we got my big, big lump of ash tree right here. I'm going to put that right there. Got a tree right here. Could be almost anywhere. This tree could be back here. Put it right there for now. I think we need one with 
some more solid roots right here. Growing like that. There we go. There we go. This one can even go back here more. Looks like it's just all leaning this way too much though. So I would maybe want to change this one to sit more up this way. This one to do the same. This one's just leaning too far anyway. Put this more towards the center, like right there. This one right here. This one comes right here. Front tree is in place. I've got the root coming down here between these two rocks now. With this branch coming up here and this little weak lean coming up over here. And then back here, here's the maple coming off to the side. The bigger maple back here. We got the third one back there. So it's kind of crossing a little bit. I can kind of tweak that a little bit. And then that curvy one in the back. Not so worried about that right now. Wherever that thing goes, if it grows, great. So now I just gotta get this side figured out. It's looking a little bit messy right now, but I still have to get that one in there, but that's still another hour of thawing as I continue to record this. So I will put a couple more of these trees in the background and we'll save the very, very front for the end and hope it uh, is to my liking. Very close to being done. I've got my Big cottonwood up front, maple, maple, maple in the back, another maple back here, and this curly Q1 that's just all over the place, but right now it's gonna stay right there. We got the twin trunk of the twin trunk here coming out this way, and this little guy, we'll see what he does, if he survives. So I have room to put this guy right out in front. that will be off to the left of this one right here, and this is still kind of my front. A couple different angles look pretty good. And about there, give or take. But that's all we can do for now. I can let this tree thaw and we'll move some rock here and place that right here. I've got some other rocks that I will probably place on the trail. I love rocks. These are all rocks collected from various trips throughout the years. Kind of have a nice little rock structure up here somehow and a uh, little, little decoration. Give it some, some depth of field. But for right now, I'm gonna give it a water and then I'm gonna have to wait for the other tree to thaw. I'm gonna go take a dinner break and we'll come back and finish our forest. Well, there you can see I got that last tree out of that box. We went ahead and put it on in there. So there's my forest, it's a little weak on the right side, maybe it'll all grow in big this year. Got the nice uh, thick tree over there but shorter, big tall central one with the maple in the back there and all the ashes behind there. We'll see what happens. Get this outside in my garage which is now becoming a big cold frame because this will not fit in any of my cold frames. Maybe outside in the small cabin if I can fit that through the door. I think I'll have to try that. That does it for this episode of Dave's Bonsai. Thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Happy bonsai and everybody. Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. Uh, in the sense that I have a branch that splits into two shoots in here, so I'm probably going to cut this thing off right about here this fall. I've taken my uh, knob cutter and I've gotten rid of some of that. So I just put them on the bottom, growing upwards into the bag. We the trees and then we water as we need to. We're trying to get rid of those air pockets.